Welcome to the post show, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode four of our post show where Tom has left me, Richie's froze once again in a thought provoking position, and I'm just left talking to myself. And now Richie's gone, Tom's changed position. <laughs> um, are, you, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Um, it's the same issue I had at the start of the show. I... Yeah, let's do the post show. I don't... Richie's aptly named this episode The Pause Show. The Pause Show. The Pause Show. The Pause Show. <laughs> and this is um, episode... This is Luna. This is episode four featuring Luna, the Labradoodle. She is a Labradoodle, yeah. Even though she's... She's adorable. I know. Oh, can we just have a podcast with just her face? The puppy podcast. Oh, I don't even want to talk yeah, about a topic. Good. She's oh, She's gone to sleep already. I know. Oh. I mean, I can take her. I can take her away. It's fine. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. She's just gonna sleep. Are you okay to do a post show with a doggy in your lap? Yeah, I'm just gonna try and adjust myself very briefly. She might wake up again just for a sec. That's okay. Oh, just while I. Oh. Come on, puppy. Come on, baby. Oh. How well, old? She's in this blanket. How old is She'll she, Tom? Asleep. She's not even nine weeks yet. Oh. Not as old as our yeah. podcast. No, that's all as the podcast. <laughs> She's missed She'll out on so many it. episodes. She's yeah. been to the toilet, so she won't shit or piss on me. Uh, well, that's your <laughs> problem, not ours. Thing. Well, it's a po- <laughs> the advantage of a podcast and a YouTube video is that we can't smell you. <laughs> so that is true. That is true. So our podcast episode this week, aside from cute, adorable uh, puppies aside is all about what games we would like to see on Stadia. So uh, let's think. Paw Patrol, um, Pets. What's that Pets? Can you remember that Pets game that came out on PC? Nintendogs. Nintendogs, yeah, Nintendogs. Um, Um, Don't think that's coming to Bloodborne. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Zoo uh, Tycoon. Yeah. Animal Thing games. (laughs) But in reality, though, games we'd really like to see. I think there's quite a lot of topic being going around this week. Um, mm-hmm. about big titles, big, big titles. Uh, GTA 5 has been the big rumoured report from, I think it was a French uh, rock star based website that started off this yeah. rumour report. And it's kind of just, naturally the Stadia fan base is like, yes, it's, yes, give us that game. It's hard to tell the validity of that because we don't know anything about the website. There might be a website that's actually quite reputable in France for covering rock star stuff, mm-hmm. in which case it's a big thing fine but it could just be like a fanzine with some obscure information yeah which is why we didn't report on it in the main show because we want to see rockstar or stadia both confirm take um 2k sorry to report on it just to confirm and lock that in before we go in depth discussion around it but (laughs) uh gda again one of the biggest games ever i think it's the most selling the highest selling game of all time maybe it's on isn't it it's my it's the most yeah isn't it the best selling entertainment property it's made the most money, Probably. I think, yeah. uh, financially, yeah. which is huge. And I could see it coming to Stadia eventually. I just don't think it'll be anytime soon. I think it'll most likely well, be in line with the PS5 and Xbox iteration. Yeah, that's when I would have thought the launch. It's like they're, they're working on the next generation version of the game. Mm-hmm. Would you really want to put the effort into getting the current version of the game on a new platform when the new platform probably is going to sustain, support the um, the better, newer version? Mm. Probably just a case of let's wait. Yeah. Um, again, we could talk about GDA for so long. It's such a, it's an absolute juggernaut <laughs> of a game, and, and yeah. GDA Online in its own right is probably far bigger than the game originally planned to be. So yeah. one day, one day, I think it will come to Stadia. Um, I can potentially see it morphing into just GT Grand Theft Auto, and it's just a persistent world thing because I mean, it kind of is. And they occasionally point, right? they just occasionally bring out like story DLC or something. For it. Well, yeah, I think you've spoken about that before on the show as well, haven't you? Yeah. But it would definitely be one of those games that I'd like to see on the platform. Um, the only thing that worries me about it is I think GTA and its uh, longevity, long, longevity really is down to its online element. And that's what worries me a little bit because yeah. just because of Stadia's player numbers, I, I just want to see that does get Does it have cross platform? Don't think it does. With PC, maybe. 
but that's something that can sort out for next gen. Um, yeah. Tom, you mentioned to it in the in the show, I believe, uh, Fall Guys. Yeah. Um, again, there's been I won't say speculation about it happening, but it's obviously extremely successful at the moment, and it's probably one of these games that's only going to have its 15 minutes of fame sort of thing. But if the devs keep rolling out the content for it and keep adding new, um, you know, new rounds to it, new modes and so on to the, you know, to the craziness of what Fall Guys is, it would be something that I could see being, you know, being an absolute blast to have on Stadia again, specifically with the likes of like crowd, crowd play and crowd choice as well, Mm. going alongside it. Um, But interestingly, somebody within the community actually tweeted out asking like whether we could get Fall Guys on Stadia and the Fall Guys team actually responded and said, we love the idea of Stadia and we'd love to be able to do that. So, you know, the communication has happened. Yeah. It's just a question about whether it does or whether it's viable for um, for the team to do it. Yeah, I think it's probably a lot of stuff where we've talked before. It's probably like the player bit, the potential install base for Stadia is relatively low compared to other platforms, which push, unfortunately makes it a lower priority for developers, especially smaller developers, unless Google will to throw them the cash. Well, it depends how much money they've made as well at this point. Yeah. Um... Is Tom froze with the dog? Yeah, it seems to. Yeah, have less. They can both just go to sleep. In terms yeah. of Fall Guys itself, my take on it was: I know the developers who came out. I believe the response um, wasn't necessarily from them direct. It was someone who worked on the team who mentioned it about Stadia. It wasn't an official response mm-hmm. from like the Twitter account. So again, take it all with yeah. a big pinch of salt. They have got agreements in place with PlayStation at the moment. It was obviously a PlayStation Plus game. Uh, for this month, which is why it's had such a astronomical launch. It is available yeah. on Steam, and it's 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 leapfrogged, I think, Fortnite in terms of downloads, um, too. But as Tom said, hopefully that'll keep ticking over month on month, um, and when those uh, exclusive deals or whatever they've brokered behind the scenes is up, I could see it coming to other platforms. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is an indie, it is an indie title, so if Google give them enough money, why wouldn't they want to move over? But then they've well, probably made it. so much money... Does it become their best interest to get it on Stadia? We'll uh, probably have to wait to find out. But uh, There he is. He's back. Back yeah. again. But yeah, we've seen Fall Guys have the same benefit of Rocket League when it launched on PlayStation Plus. It just got this massive install base immediately. Yeah. And that's how it benefits so much because everyone starts talking about it. It's free so everyone can try it out. And the great thing with Fall Guys is it's just, it's daft and nonsensical fun. It doesn't take really that much thought to get to know the controls. Everyone's seen like those yeah. like total wipeout to Keshi's Castle style um, com- like Saturday yeah. t- afternoon TV shows and such. And I think people just get it really, really quickly. And it's fun and whimsical and the music's a delight. It's, it's easy. It's easily approachable. Yeah. And, and that's it's the same with Rocket League. Yeah. It was like, oh, so it's just like soccer with cars. I get it. Hit the ball yeah. in the goal. Done. <laughs> Point. I get the I get the concept mm. of what this game is. Yeah, definitely. So oh. we've got GDA. We've got Fall Guys. Richie, have you got any games you would like to see uh, come to Stadia? Whether it's just well, big sky <laughs> thinking or something realistically you would think we'd see. If you can't, if you uh, do twenty sixteen, <laughs> <laughs> we're never going to see that no. on Stadia. No. We're not. Uh, I don't think so. We are. But if you cast your mind way, 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 way back to the right when we first started the podcast, I'd like to see the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Editions come across. Although I'm sceptical because we have heard stuff coming out um, of developers' rumours and stuff that Google require you to ha- be able to support both controller and mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Which puts a bit of a spanner in the works and I really hope... Um, they just move away from that practice because one of the things I was interested in Stadia about was the ability to play PC games without not without needing to have a PC. And that opens up another world of gaming. But unfortunately, the fact that you have to have control sports basically means that games that are mm. made specifically for, for PC, for mouse and keyboard, are le- the less, developers are less likely to bring it over. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, there are off the back of that there are a few games that I think could be ported then quite easily. Uh, Frontier Games have done quite a lot recently about porting PC games over to console. Uh one of my favorite yeah. ones was Jurassic World Evolution, which is essentially yeah. just theme park roller coaster tycoon but with Jurassic Park IP. Um this yeah. this year they've got the uh, Planet Coaster piece um console edition comes out later yeah. on this year. They've also confirmed it for next gen so PS5 and Xbox. So 
you great point there, Richie. I think games that are already optimized. I think like uh, Tropico is another yeah. one. Um, Skyline City Skylines. Uh, I think there's loads of games that great work great on PC. Don't necessarily function controller compatibility wise on console as well, but Stadia kind of alleviates that with you being able to freely switch between the two. Um, so accessible. Yeah. Well, that, that's it. Um, it. It's just a shame that you, the foot at the moment seems to be forcing. You have to have both yeah. rather than an either or situation. Yeah. Which would all open up the world. Older, and not a lot of older PC yeah. games, doesn't it, essentially? Well, that's why I brought Baldur's Gate. It's like, you, yeah. I, Bean Dog, who produced the Hands Editions, are they really wanting to put in the effort to mod that game to con- support controller when it's clearly not made for it? No, I don't think I don't think they are. I wouldn't have thought so either. Yeah, um, which is a shame. Yeah, uh, I think there's a big market for PC games that are able to play outside of having like a high-end PC, yeah. um, especially yeah. with the mouse and keyboard compatibility. But you're right, Richie, that is a an awkward caveat that I think will stump quite a lot of developers because it's just probably not worth the time to, to port it over. Um, big games, big games, what would I like to see? I mean, I want to um, jump in and say that I really want to, I still want to see the Mass Effect trilogy once it's been remastered. There seems to be a little bit more um, more scope for that out there mm. at the moment. I'm aware I've been quite active on Twitter when talking about Mass Effect related activity, and there are there are hints of it coming possibly next year at some point as well. So it'd be lovely to have those sorts of games on there, some sort of big yeah. um, action RPG esque title. Um, or shoot, oh, shooter RPG, really. I, I wouldn't be. I actually wouldn't be surprised because um, they've been quite quiet. There's been it's been one of them games where fans have been demanding it for pretty much since the games first came out. But if they've looked and go, not this generation, we'll do it next gen. They, yeah, they can't really talk too much about it till about now, really. Mm, true. Um, some of the ones I'd, I'd like to see, which I've mentioned it a few times on the podcast, but ones that I also feel would work very well with uh, crowd play and also touchscreen controls in two different circumstances would be the Telltale games. So yeah. they work perfectly fine with touchscreen controls because usually you've only got four options. So it's a case of just pick one of the four options um, to, to pick your narrative direction. But then also yeah. when it comes to crowd play, just playing alongside with your audience. Imagine us doing um, like a Walking Dead stream with our entire audience, and they get to pick which decisions impact our story, and we get to play through it like that. That would be fantastic. Absolutely, yeah, and, I'd love that. And Telltale obviously have a vast library of, of very, very popular IP, which is I think is one of the reasons why they became so big. Is like Walking Dead pushed them into that stratosphere, <laughs> but let's not forget they have Back to the Future, they have Jurassic Park, they have Batman. The Tell, telltale and such the, do they still have them they, they never did own the ip but in terms of like the games that yeah. exist out there in that catalog i think skybound entertainment own them now they've, yeah. they've kind of tried to raise them like a phoenix for the walking dead complete collection but in terms of like going forward if they want to make a quick a quick bit of money i'm sure google would love to have that entire library like back catalog on their platform in such an accessible format because you can't get them on mobile feeds well. for like to get Batman and like Borderlands and stuff, yeah, and then you, so you can pub, republish your games. Yeah, but again, like you can get some of the Telltale games on mobile, so we know they work like on like iOS and Android. Um, yeah. Again, it's just a case of like doing those deals with a company that technically doesn't exist anymore. It's just a, it's like a re- reboot Phoenix company. Um, but yeah, I think they yeah. lend themselves really well. As as a side note, I think I'd like to see the. Uh, touch controls and stadia be improved but this is more down to developers rather than google themselves because the emulated controller sucks mm. and it just it's just a bad it just doesn't work it doesn't feel good no the the button placement isn't very easy to use is it? it's almost like you have to claw well, your fingers around the, the screen yeah for me it's just the concept it's a bad concept it, it works yeah. for some smaller stuff Give me the option to customize my layout a bit. It's not that big of a feature, but crucially, how, for some games that are more optimized for mobile anyway, I actually have proper touch controls in there. Yeah, mm. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I don't know how much how much you can sort of optimize touch screen controls on a screen which isn't a controller. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get what you're saying. Um, well, bit, yeah. You just have a cursor instead. I, you, you know. Your finger is the cursor. Well, yeah, you could just have if his game's made for touchscreen controls, and then you're playing with a controller. 
you just replace the control the touchscreen with a cursor that you move around and click. Yeah, yeah I've I've it's, never been one for the touchscreen controls. Yeah. I think growing up with physical controllers, that that lack of haptic feedback, it, like that physical like satisfying pushing of a button. You'd ne- also, you're never going to be able to replicate that on a touch screen unless yeah, the screen is... Yeah, over the, scr- over the yeah. thing you're looking at as well. Unless your finger actually somehow pushes in on the screen like a little click feature. It's just never going to yeah. be the same. It's it's not comparable. Um, in terms of other games, some big ones for me, uh, just to round out the show. Um, I've said before in my predictions, and I've never got any points for it, but the, the companies they're working with, WB and 2K, I'd love to see the Bioshock collection. Uh, Tom, you mentioned Mass Effect. I'd love to see the Batman Arkham trilogy. All these games that have had remasters this past generation to bring them like up to the, the highest fidelity they've ever been, the collection's been done. So just if you port it over, yeah. we're going to get three yeah. games for the for the bundled price of one, essentially. And uh, I just think that it's money sitting on a shelf. And the best thing I think I've mentioned that you agreed, Richie, as well, was the, the fact that you've got a collection. There's something more satisfying yeah. about buying a collection when it's there in its entirety. When it's... When it's all the games, having it as in the collection makes it feel like it's worth more. Well, yeah. it, it it's easier to justify the price of it. Yeah, and I, I yeah, got the uh, the Bioshock collection for PlayStation Four. I made a point because I knew they were all highly rated games. I'd never played them bar the first, I think, twenty minutes of the original, but they were so well revealed. I knew I wanted to get in. I knew they were my type of game. I bought the Steelbook uh, Bioshock collection because, like you said, I I knew I was investing in the whole complete set. Obviously, until yeah. later on next year, the year after when they bring out Bioshock 4 and it ruins my whole thing. <laughs> but in terms of like making an invested purchase, it seemed perfectly better for me to buy the collection in like a fancy collector's case because it was all together in one box. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. Which obviously isn't a thing on Stadia, but it just means they can piecemeal as them as a pro game every month. He's Bioshock like to see, 3, um... then 1, then <laughs> leave 2 standing for to, bear, to pay for. <laughs> I'd like to see more support from companies like Sega as well. I'd love to see like a Sonic collection, like the old, the old classics, and then maybe like the Sonic Adventure games as well. You know, just to Sonic round Mania. it out, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sonic Mania. Um, in particular, like loads of indie games that I'd love to see on there. We've talked about them on the in prediction shows and so on before as well. But I think games like even if it's not Minecraft, maybe something like Terraria. Um, or something that's you know relatively yeah. similar in that sort of concept. Stardew Valley, I think, yeah, is another really about. big one. Is Stardew Nintendo exclusive or not? Nope. No. No. No, it's, it's just, on Steam, yeah. it's on, on all consoles. Yeah. It's just one of them you just have a, natu- have a natural association with a single platform mm. when it's just not true. Yeah, it's usually yeah. art styles, I feel, that just lend well, themselves yeah. to Nintendo I, so much more. We talk about control on the podcast, and I, I, kept, I keep thinking that's PlayStation exclusive, but it's not. It's third-person action game. It's like it fits their MO of exclusives yeah. perfectly. So no yeah. surprise, but that that was actually the one Xbox game that I feel um, regrettably missed out on for the past few years was Quantum Break, which was the previous title because it looked yeah. right up my street. With you have powers, it's third person action, um, very much what Control seemed to evolve into, um, and I missed out on it because I had PlayStation at the time. I wonder if it's yeah. on X Games Pass. Hmm. Ooh, worth nice. checking out. Possibly. But the last one I would personally say is, um, and again, I've been I've been very vocal about this one, is No Man's Sky. I just think it's a game that it's getting so much love from the community after the the shambles it launched with. Um, and, and Sean Murray and Hello Games have done so much incredible work with that title yeah. since it's come out. They've really built that game up from, quite frankly, a disastrous launch. And now it's just something that is I... is really, really loved in the community. I had a little sympathy for people like, with the disastrous launch of that game because I was looking at it, it was getting amazingly hyped up. I was looking and going, what is the game? And there was never, there was no real explanation what the game is. Like, oh, it's got billions of planets and stuff you can visit. And he's like, yeah, but why would I? Oh, mm-hmm. And they way. never answered that question. So I think people massively, the developers and the publishers, to blame a bit as well, that yeah. game was so overhyped. Yeah, I think, and then Sony... obviously it came out as a mediocre game at the time. As like, yeah, <laughs> but that's what I expected. Again, credit where credits due. They stuck with it, and they've kind of oh, made up for their mistakes a... tenfold. I think at this point, from what I'm hearing, it's a great game now. But mm. at the time, it was like it was just the level of hype was ridiculous for a game where you no one could really give you like ex- a good explanation of what the game was about. Yeah, it was just purely like the the idea that you could travel through yeah. um, through solar you know through different star systems to different planets that were procedurally generated 
um, and had procedurally generated creatures on them. Um, but other than that, there was not much to it. It was just an exploration game, but now it's just built up to have so much more to it as well. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. ship construction, you know, um, habitation, loads yeah. of things really. Basically they've built the world and now they're building the game. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. It was yeah. a game made with maths. Algorithms. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, but again, yeah, great titles. Uh, there's probably way, way more that I'm not even thinking of, uh, that I would love to see. I mean, yeah. to be fair, I'd love to see everything on stage. Yeah. It makes our lives a lot better, and it definitely fills our new segment out each week. Yeah, uh, the more that comes, um, we like to talk about new game releases, not, yeah, not uh, Apple getting su Apple and Google <laughs> getting sued. Exactly. But what you're going to do? Um, but that has been what we would like to see on Stadia as part of our post show episode number four uh, with our very special guest uh, Luna, the little Labradoodle puppy, sat there. Luna, the Labradoodle. Mm -hmm. Labradoodle, there, there, there. Doodle. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by for our post show content. If you'd like to uh, let us know in the comments below what your game you'd like to see come to stadium, not your game unless you are a developer, your favourite game you'd like to see come over to stadium. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some will be right, some will be wrong, some will never see, some we may do if we keep our fingers crossed and uh, look to the future. But thank you to for stopping this by. This could have been like a four hour podcast if we wanted it to. We'll just yeah, keep we're trying to keep it short and snippy, but uh, yeah. yeah, we could go on forever. But thank you for stopping by. If you do like to talk more, join us in our Discord chat or join us over on Facebook, forward slash Sounds of Stadia, or follow us on Twitter at Sounds of Stadia. My name's been Chris for the Poor Show. Oh, I've been Tom. For the Poor Show. For the Poor Show. <laughs> I've been Richie for the Poor Show. You really don't like it when I, when I change that thing. Let's, I'll, <laughs> but that I'll, was Tom's fault that time. All right, I'll try that again probably. I've been Chris. I've been Tom. I've been Richie. Also with Tom mm -hmm. is... Little Luna. Little Luna. We've been Sounds of Stadia post show. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Have a great week and see you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.